Hello and welcome to part three, the final part of the rebuild of the AS2066. And here we're on the dial side of the movement and the dial side is quite a busy place on this particular movement, as you'll see as we move along fitting all the various parts. First of all, we start with the clutch and the winding pinion, followed by the setting lever, the yoke and the yoke spring with all of the relevant pivots oiled and all of the relevant mating surfaces greased. Here I'm using a piece of pegwood to hold the spring in place while I manipulate that into position behind the yoke and you can see that it doesn't always go to plan as the spring just pops off there. So you do have to be very careful with these, they, uh, they can ping away and they're very easy to lose. Once this is in place, I'm oiling the pivots of the cams, which is on the setting lever cover plate. And unfortunately that was a little out of focus, apologies for that, I forgot to focus down onto it. Uh, but that was shown in the first video. And it's quite an unusual cover plate um, with uh, its strange array of cams underneath which operate the quick day date change. And this is screwed into place and unfortunately I did have to reuse the upper screw with, with part of the head that was snapped off. It does still hold in place but I, uh, I would have liked to have replaced that and I do somewhere have a box full of screws which unfortunately I wasn't able to locate uh, prior to rebuilding this. And here I'm applying just a little grease where the plate contacts the lug on the setting lever. Here I'm installing the minute wheel and I'm using an oiler to hold back the spring that maintains tension on the minute wheel in its slotted groove. And 
not shown I did actually miss uh, miss out showing the fitting of the cannon pinion which is just a, a sliding fit onto here because the tension for the cannon pinion is actually provided by the sliding uh, pinion gear on the second wheel This spring is part of the quick day date change mechanism and uh, I'm fitting it here before realizing that it actually needs to be fitted into place after the hour wheel has been installed and uh, you will see in just a moment that that's rectified. Here you can see that the hour wheel has been installed and I go ahead and refit the spring correctly. And at this point I'm just checking that the hand setting and date setting portions operate correctly. This is another section of the quick day date change mechanism and there are several parts that make up this mechanism and it's quite a clever assembly because what it does is it holds the day date change mechanism under tension right until the very last second where it snaps over both the day and the date in a fraction of a second to the following day so it will quite literally just snap both of them over at midnight so quickly that you'd barely even notice it it's a very clever system but there are an awful lot of levers and uh, and bits and pieces so here we fit the calendar wheel this just sits into its groove accordingly and then up at the top here which is just s sat in place is the um, the day wheel jumper spring and then the date wheel jumper spring followed by its uh, I was rather sorry the date wheel jumper followed by its jumper spring Following this is the small silver wheel which is the wheel that advances the day date with the spring at the top of that and I will show this in operation shortly so that you can see how the mechanism functions. And then once all those are in place while holding tension on the calendar wheel jumper the cover plate is fitted and is screwed into place with two screws opposite one another and these two components here are the final two components of the quick date change mechanism and these are screwed into place with the pivots lubricated and the mating surfaces of the two parts greased accordingly. And there I'm just removing a little excess lubricant with some Rodico.
and the second part of the spring mechanism has two locating studs and a screw to ensure correct placement and you can see that the long spring of that locates inside the slot and the groove of the lower one. Apologies that I don't know the actual technical sheet names for these parts but I don't have a technical sheet on hand for this movement and I'm sure they all have their own specific names but uh, I'm afraid I don't know those but I do know what they do so hopefully that will suffice. You can see here how the quick date change mechanism works using the cam on the setting lever cover plate and those two springs. And then the dial ring snaps into place. Down here where I'm pointing with my peg wood, that spring there needs to be located on the cam of the lower one so it's under tension and if you watch as I wind as I now wind this on you'll see the spring on the silver wheel actually come under tension and then the jumper to the left will suddenly snap over and in doing so this is what advances both the day and the date simultaneously and it happens in a fraction of a second it's a very very clever system and here it is with the day wheel in place so that you can see it in action and it really is a blink and you miss it kind of action next to be refitted is the dial and this is just located in place so the dial feet fit through the holes accordingly and then they are screwed into place. Here I'm just advancing the date to the 12 p.m. position as you can see and then I can go ahead and refit the hands. You'll note on this video I'm actually using my tweezers to place and press the hands on and this is an unusual thing it's, it's still my preferred method of placing hands and it's something it's the way that I was originally taught and the way that I, uh, I used to I, I learned to do it essentially and the hand pressing tools came much later and although I have made myself some hand pressing tools I still can't quite get to grips with them I, I don't really have the same kind of feel as I do with a pair of tweezers. So this is my preferred method of, of fitting hands, but I can fully understand why some people find the thought of it a little nerve wracking because of course you're very close to the dial with a pair of tweezers. And once all the hands are in place, I just rotate th that through 24 hours to check that the hands are not fouling each other or the indices and that the date snaps over on or close to midnight. In this case I was very very pleased that it's pretty much bang on midnight as you can see there. And then the movement is cased back up again in its very 1970s TV style case. With the movement in the case, we now move on to the automatic winding cassette mechanism. And in just a moment, I will show you this in close up. This is uh, it's quite an interesting assembly in its own right. The cassette is held together by a single screw and then once it is separated 
you'll be able to see the the two very fine springs underneath and see how they operate Apologies that my head is obscuring the view at this point. There I'm oiling the um, the little pinion wheel on the pulley there that swings under tension to engage or disengage the intermediate winding wheel. And then the parts are greased where they mate with the springs. Once those are fitted in place, the, I guess you'd call it a second intermediate winding wheel is placed in position and then the top plate is put on effectively sandwiching the whole assembly and with a little bit of judicious wiggling and manipulation with tweezers and an oiler we make sure that everything is lining up and meeting properly apologies once again that I obscure the view there. I really must try to remember not to lean forward over the work if I can uh, do so. Uh, but there I'm just oiling the pivots of the jewels and replacing the, uh, the screw that holds the plates together. No apologies, I wasn't oiling the pivots at that point. I was actually just manipulating the lever into position so that it's engaged with the wheel. The lower pivots are then oiled and the cassette is fitted accordingly onto the movement. The nice thing about this automatic assembly is should you need to remove the automatic work to access for example the mainspring barrel you're not having to remove separate gears and then having to realign them all it just removes as a complete cassette assembly which I think is, is quite nice. Apologies for being off screen a little here, but as you can see at this point here, I'm replacing the rotor which simply slips onto the post. And you can see there that the rotor is actually a unidirectional winding rotor. Uh, winding it that way does nothing but the opposite way, as you can see, starts to put wind onto the ratchet wheel. And I'm applying a little bit of oil onto the pivot point there. And then the locking mechanism is slid into place and this slots into a groove underneath the oscillating weight where the toothed ratchet sits and holds that in place and prevents it from falling out. Uh, very simple but very um, elegant and effective solution. And this is something that's quite common across several AS movements. And here is the movement on the time grapher after regulation and this is dialed down.
and then pendant down. And then dial up. And pendant right. Dial up, pendant right and pendant down are the three main positions I regulate for because they are the most common in use. Following this we do pendant up which is also handy for right wrist wearers. And at that point uh, there's a, a big uh, jump there uh, because I've just rotated that right the way back round to dial down position and you'll see in just a moment that that will even back out. And all in all I'm really really pleased with the trace on this. It's a very nice watch and hopefully the owner will be delighted to receive it back beating away and doing a nice job of telling the time. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this and we will see you in the next video.